On behalf of the Council, our members, and staff of the American Geographical Society, it's our pleasure to join the University of Missouri-St. Louis and welcome all of you to this special workshop as part of Geography 2050 STL. It is great to be able to continue the Geography 2050 franchise here in the heartland of the United States, St. Louis. We believe in St. Louis. We believe in the geospatial expertise and leadership based in this great city. And we believe St. Louis is well on its way to becoming the center of geospatial, not just for the heartland, but for the entire United States. And we believe that all of this will happen because of the role that you play in educating the future geospatial professionals that will lead this city and the geospatial industry in the future. And that is why we are here. Although geography, as a field of study, has been around for a long time, the explosion of geospatial science and tools in just the last few years has propelled geography to the forefront of technological advancement, ease in conducting our day-to-day -day activities, furtherment of scientific discovery, and the need for a new generation of young professionals to fill the many career opportunities which, which are open to those who are geographically and geospatially savvy. And that is where you come in. For the most part, you are the first formal connection students have with geography and geospatial science. Whether you teach a formal course in geography, include geography in your social studies classes, or use geographical tools in your classroom, such as maps or GIS software and sites, you are not only the experts in this area, but you are the ones who make the first impression on students about this field of study that we all hold dear. UMSL and AGS are committed to providing you with as much support as possible so that you can provide students with the best exposure to geospatial. We see St. Louis as the new center of geospatial in the US. And through your efforts that many, perhaps most, of the future geospatial professionals who will fill positions at NGA, ESRI, Planet Labs, and the hundreds of other geospatial organizations who are calling St. Louis home, we recognize something that many of you have always known. It starts in your schools through your efforts. Throughout the relationship UMSL and AGS have built over the past years, there is a fundamental cornerstone we share. We are here to help. We do not want to sell you anything. No, really, we are not going to ask you to buy anything from us. We're not even going to ask you to join our organization. What we do for you, we do through our own financial support, and we do not want our relationship to be transactional. We believe in the absolute importance of geographic education, and we will do whatever it takes to help you, the people who, will, who are at the front lines, the people who make geographic and geospatial education possible. When we were planning the Geography 2050 STL Symposium, we knew from the beginning that a teacher workshop has to be a big part of the program. Early in our discussions, Esri let us know that they wanted to be part of this. Esri's commitment to education has a long history, and from the beginning, they've made their software available to our nation's schools at little or no cost. Their support for bringing technology into schools has served as a model for many other disciplines and organizations. AGS has had a relationship with Esri since the beginning, and we are very proud that they are the sponsor of today's workshop. Thank you, Esri. We have a lot of ground. We have a lot of ground to cover today, so let's not lose time. We want to start our day with a blue ribbon panel of four of the most important individuals who are leading the cause for geospatial here in St. Louis. When we contacted them and asked for their participation, their immediate and enthusiastic response to us was a clear indi indicator that this group of people understand the critical role that you play as St. Louis leads the nation in geospatial. It is a pleasure for me to hand the stage over to Dr. Retta Amer and his panel. Retta? Thank you. <clears throat> 
Good morning. Good morning. I would like to thank you all for accepting our invitation and the coming today. I know you just finished the school year and uh, also want to thank you for your efforts that you are doing with our children at schools. So thank you so much. I'm honored to moderate the session, the first session today with panel of brilliant experts, <laughs> Chancellor Kristin Sopolik and Ms. Zakita Armstrong, Chair and the CEO of Gateway Global American Youth and the Business Alliance, Vice Admiral and the former Director of NGA, Robert Sharp. We also honor to have him as a research fellow with AMSEL Geospatial Collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Rida Amir. I'm Director of AMSEL Geospatial Collaborative. I started my role here in February, and I want to give brief introduction about uh, GIS and the geospatial science. Back in 1990s, when someone applied for a job, one of the basic questions is, do you know how to use computers? <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you know how to use the Microsoft package? <laughs> this was basic question because this, some, you know, it was new. Now, <clears throat> when someone applies for a job, one of the basic question is, do you know GIS? It doesn't matter your background is. <laughs> Business, yeah. public health, civil engineering, urban planning, real estate, you will be asking this question. Do you know GIS? So what is GIS? It's emerging science under a bigger umbrella called geospatial sciences. So geospatial, this word has two terms. Geo, it's a Latin word, means earth. And the spatial means a space or location. So geospatial means a geographic location on Earth. How, what about GIS? When we have a, a location on Earth and we add information to this location, any information connected with this location, so now we are in GIS. We are in geographic information system. So this building, where it is located, at this address. Any information about it? The area, how tall it is, how many seats it fit. So this is GIS. I will give you some examples to know more how everyone use GIS. We are all using GIS in our daily lives. Some people, they use GIS and they don't know they are using it. <laughs> so when you, for example, use Google to search for anything, like, oh, I want to go for dinner, I will look, what is the best restaurant here in this area? <laughs> what is the best seafood restaurant? This will be the results. Points. These points are location. And when you move your cursor or your finger on your cell phone, at any point, you will find information about these restaurants. Name, phone number, and address, and also a uh, link to their website so you can go in and get this information. When you start driving, select any point, the GPS will take you to that location. So all of this are GIS and the geospatial. The GPS is the work with from signal from satellite to direct you to the correct directions. Determining these addresses and these location is geocoding, GIS. Another example, we 
all suffered from COVID-19 and pandemic. And following the news, what is updates? How many cases? So thank you for, thanks for Johns Hopkins resources. They provided daily updates on this. Mm -hmm. So this is the last updated map on March this <clears throat> year for pandemic cases. Look at this map, different colors. Darker colors means more cases. These are hot spots of COVID. Lighter color means lower number of cases. This US map counties and the number of cases. How many counties we have in the United States? More than 3,000. So imagine that you have a 3,000 spreadsheet in front of you. And you want to know what counties they have the higher number of cases. How long this will take from your time? One hour, two hours, a day, maybe more. 3,000 spreadsheets. How much time it took from you to know what is going on? A minute. A picture worth mm -hmm. more than a thousand words. So this is the beauty of GIS. One last example. This map was made by one of my undergraduate students. Uh, when I was a professor at uh, Tulane University in New Orleans. <clears throat> the project was about what the best location in New Orleans for a new park. So if I ask this question to you, what parameters we need to know, what data we need to have to determine the best location for new park here in St. Louis. So, for example, you need to know where is the existing park. First, you need the new park not to be close or very close to the existing park. We need the new park to be closer to schools, nursery home, accessible to roads and the highways. All of this are built as layers and then we get these results the model, the green color is the existing parks and the yellow color is the places that we can make a new color. So we can make decisions based on the geospatial analysis. Many thousands of examples, so I'm not going to go more, it is not a lecture, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I will uh, uh, go now to what is going on here in St. Louis. St. Louis is the national hub of geospatial science, technology, and the industry. And all board is working hard to make it a global hub. And without you, we cannot reach it to that point. Because to reach it to that point, we need to start from early ages, from schools. We need to prepare the coming generations for especially thinking. So we, they can do better than we are doing now. So we have over 15 organizations from academia, from industry, nonprofit organizations. We are all working together under the umbrella of geofutures and uh, uh, Vice Admiral Bob Sharp and I, we are uh, leading the efforts of the Talent Initiative Working Group in St. Louis. We will talk about that during our conversation. So now I will start our discussion with the brilliant expert here in St. <laughs> Louis. And we first question right. Who's that? will be to provide insights on the geospatial ecosystem in St. Louis and its significance 
as a national hub of geospatial technology and the industry. I'm particularly interested in understanding the key factors contributing to St. Louis growth in this field. Mm -hmm. and the various institutions, the company, and the initiatives that have established it as thriving geospatial community. So, please, Chancellor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, thank you, Rita. I appreciate that. Um, welcome, everybody. First, I'm Kristen Soblick. I'm Chancellor here at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. And I first just wanted to welcome you all here to our beautiful campus and to the Two Hill Performing Arts Center here this morning. I know, you know, you're teachers, um, and many of you, when I had the conversations with you this morning, you are done for the, the, um, the year. So I really appreciate you coming here and spending your own time to really learn about um, geospatial, or you already know more to engage more and, and to have that discussion about how, what we can collectively do to make sure that um, St. Louis and we remain um, that central force and that hub. So I guess getting back to your, your question, um, Rita, what can we do you know, in, in that geospatial area? We are, we are privileged as a region to be um, considered a geospatial hub because of what we already have here going on. Um, we have now the expansion of what we used to term um, NGA West is expanding in North St. Louis. And with that expansion, which is now NGA St. Louis, by the way, with that expansion, it's important for all of us collectively to work together to make sure that we are coalescing our assets. We have so many things going on in the educational space, and as Rita had indicated, in the nonprofit space, higher education industry. A lot of us are all working very hard and have for many years to make sure that we are advancing geospatial here in St. Louis. And what I think is important now is, of course, to continue that work, but to make sure that we're working together so that we're aligned in how we're building out the talent pipeline from um, K through uh, 16, all, you know, from the beginning all the way up, which is that's your um, crucial, important role. But it feeds into the talent pipeline for our industry partners, for the NGA itself, and just for the knowledge and understanding of our students in our region on the importance of geospatial for our nation, but also important for the economic growth and development for St. Louis. So that's why I'm really proud that we have some partners here like um, Gateway Global, as well mm -hmm. as Unleashing Potential, our higher educational partners, um, and as we um, coalesce and work together. I know Rita had shown uh, you know, the talent working group. We also have a group that's focused on the research potential of geospatial. But from my perspective, it's about the collaboration, mm -hmm. making sure that we are working collectively together so that we're not um, repeating efforts out and about in the ecosystem. And this symposium that we um, had starting yesterday for the research group and industry group, and today, the, which is the important part, we started with that, if I remember John, as you had indicated, it's about that um, engagement early and often for our students for our future workforce, for our future re researchers. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, so okay. I just want to add that um, in 2019, uh, the region put together a plan called the Geo Futures Plan. Uh, and so we, to uh, Dr. Sobolik's point, we started very early on in trying to figure out how do we have um, an all inclusive um, plan and strategy for. Uh, becoming the geospatial hub of the world. And so the K through 16 has always been um, uh, a really critical piece of that. And we knew from the very beginning that it was important that we had uh, academia, uh, K through 12 and industry all at the table so that we could move forward as a region. And so there is a strategic plan. And one of the things that I'm very proud of is that our strategic plan, Geo Futures, um, is not just a plan that we wrote and got shelved. Um, it's a plan that we're really, really putting into action. So we're proud of that. Yeah, the, um, there was a great picture before this too we, I'd thrown in there that shows you on a stage last week at the GeoInt Symposium, uh -huh. for the panel. And I was just um, proud that, that that was on the main stage. Yeah. 
right, at, at GeoIt. We had like 5,000 people here in St. Louis, and it's very technology focused, but they carved out deliberate time to talk about the importance of growing the future generation. Yeah. And specifically, um, in, that, in that roadmap, it, it deliberately says, hey, we will be deliberate about reaching into underrepresented, under-resourced communities. Mm -hmm. Um, so once again, I'm Bob Sharp. I was uh, in the Navy for a few years. I signed up for two, and I got stuck for about 34. <laughs> um, the last job I had in the Navy was as the director of National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I took over in 2019, and I was the seventh director, or I always refer to myself as 007. <laughs> it sounds cooler. <laughs> um, but as I took over the agency, I was taken over from Robert Cardillo, um, and he, he was the one who made the decision as to where to build uh, the new headquarters. And it's replacement headquarters. You know, we, we have a facility right now that's aging down at 2nd Street, and it's, it's kind of sandwiched between Anheuser-Busch and the river and the railroad, and there's, we just can't upgrade the facility any further. So uh, Tish Long had got the money. Robert made the decision to move into northern St. Louis, and I inherited that sort of project. But when I looked at it, I said, I'm like, this is really good. I mean, this is really brilliant. Uh, because the, you know, Scott Air Force Base was a good option for, for building over there. Um, but we would have missed the opportunity for what building it in northern St. Louis needs to be and could be, right? Because it's, it's not on a base and it's, it's uh, in an underdeveloped area. Um, but then I, I looked at it and I said, um, it could be really special but I don't even control, as director of NGA, I can't make it special, right? Because for it to be what its potential is, is going to take all this collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's going to take people coming together to make sure that we don't just build a facility with walls, right? That we actually move into that community, use it to connect, use it to change, use it to transform in, in pretty special ways. And I've been really impressed to see how far we've come in such a short amount of time. And it is this, this collaboration. As a matter of fact, after I do this panel, I have to go jump on a phone call to uh, the county, uh, Albemarle County up by Charlottesville and the Commonwealth of Virginia because they want to they wanna hear about what's going on in St. Louis. They're like, hey, can we do something like this? And it, it is federal, state, local government, business development leadership, right, slash philanthropists working with academia, working with industry partners, industry partners who are established with more of a footprint here, and not just bringing their business here, but also dedicating time and resources to think about how they can contribute to growing this talent pipeline. It's just, uh, I've never seen something like this happen. And every time I talk to people, I'm like, hey, you need to see what's going on in St. Louis. And if you want to be involved in the geospatial world, you want to be involved in what's going on in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so passionate about, so committed to this, that when I was looking at transitioning, uh, the chancellor came to me and said, hey, I don't know what you're going to do in your next life, but we'd like you to somehow stay connected to St. Louis. And I said, absolutely. You know, I, I would love to do that. So I, I thank the chancellor for affording me the opportunity to come here and not only work with the university to grow a geospatial collaborative, right, which will be a hub for multidisciplinary research, but also to be involved in talent initiative working groups and growing that future generation. Um, last thing I'll say before I hand it over to you, Rita, is uh, I just want to thank you for who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my father was a career middle school teacher, right, in uh, math and science and, and uh, PE. My brother is a lifelong teacher. And I just think that your profession is so important um, really passionate about that, and I think sometimes you're you're certainly underpaid and underappreciated sometimes. Mm -hmm. But when I talk to people about about who you are and the importance of it, I I remind them I'm like it's just our future, right? It's just the future <laughs> of our nation and our planet. That's right. And if mm -hmm. you go to that next slide, um, that picture, uh, we had high school students from Zakita's program mm -hmm. at that function last week, right? And they yeah. got to hear the panel. They got to to walk around and see the technology. But that's what it's all about, mm -hmm. right? Um, because I'm getting old, right? And other people are gonna be, <laughs> I, want our, I want our future to be bright, right? So I, you know, as, as a military member, um, especially walking around in uniform, 
Uh, people go out of their way to thank me for my service, right? They always do that. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for your service mm -hmm. and a round of applause for you. Thank you, Bob. Um, actually, you already started the second topic. Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> I saw that question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always say we are in geospatial era. Yeah. This is our future. We are seeing it now. And we invest in our children. And the K-16 are the future of geospatial technology. Yeah. What are some effective initiatives or strategies that can be implemented or to engage teachers and the schools in using geospatial technologies and applications in their teaching, showcasing the broad range of uses for everyday activities like Google Maps to geospatial analysis and applications? Chancellor? Oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know that, that's a big question. Yes. And it actually isn't necessarily going to be answered by the people here on, on this stage. It's, it's answered by you who are, you know, I think um, John called it on the front lines of, of what's happening. I know that many of you um, teach AP Human Geography but it's about the collaboration between people that are working with our teachers, with our teachers as well, to what is it that we need to do to help prepare you, to help engage you with our students? What do our students need? So I don't think it's, it, that's a question, Rita, actually to be answered by the chancellor. My job is to make sure that we're incentivizing you in the work that you do. So I take a look at, we have our Dean of our College of Education out here, Dean Ann Taylor, and um, some of our faculty as well that help prepare the teachers and the curriculum. So that's what I'm going to say. It's called, um, it's others, and I need to help in that role. So I'm going to pass that over to somebody to my left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, w one thing that I think is that um, it's important for us to get teachers to understand uh, that geospatial is not something that is like in a silo, right? And so um, understanding how you can apply it to whatever your specialty is, is, is really a big piece of this. So for example, um, when we go to schools and we talk to teach, we go to Gateway Global goes to schools and we have an event called Next Geo Intelligence Ready, which we um, uh, put together with NGA. And so when we go to schools and we talk to teachers, we talk to them about how the technology applies to the subject that they're teaching so that it's not something that is like, oh, well, I'm not a tech person or I don't really understand anything about that, so it's not for me, it's for you know, maybe a hard science teacher. If you teach a social science, for example, uh, you can use the technology to, show, as, as Rita showed, um, so that students have a visualization um, of what you're teaching them. And so I would say that, that really the big strategy is, is helping you to understand how it applies to what you love to teach. Mm -hmm. I want to add on that. You know, as we formed our geospatial collaborative here uh, at the university, the faculty who are engaged in that are across all disciplines yeah. because they're using geospatial in their research, in their teaching, and their engagement. And I think that's the, the biggest point that of this kind of two-day conference is that, and as Rita had pointed out, geospatial can be <clears throat> applied and is foundational, frankly, to anything, yeah. any question, any situation, any concern. We can use geospatial technology and ideas as the foundation. So I think that's important. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm more than a little biased because I was the director of Geospatial <laughs> Intelligence Agency, but I'd, I'd tell people everything that happens, happens in time and space, yeah. right? Everything. So I, I would challenge you to, to, to try and give me uh, something that it doesn't apply to, and mm -hmm. I will come back at you and say, no, here's how you could use these tools um, to, to be better, more effective and efficient. And it, it really is a powerful way of, you know, a geographic perspective when you can look at it and analyze it spatially and, and temporally. It allows you to see things that you don't see other than looking at that, right? That visualizing it. And then for, therefore, it also allows you to, to start to discuss what you can do about 
challenges and issues. It also is a really powerful tool to help you communicate things that you're, you're trying to communicate, right, visually. Um, so it's a, it's a really powerful tool. And I'll, I'll give you uh, some challenges here and some requests just to, to make this of value. One, we're hoping that you walk away with a little more knowledge as to resources that are available to you, right? Or, or people that are involved in this world that you can connect to and stay connected with. Um, and, and I always challenge people in venues like this, meet some people you don't know, exchange contact data, and stay connected. Actually go home and like, email that person to say, hey, it was really nice meeting you. Um, I'll give you another challenge is help us spread the word on this, right? You know a lot of people that aren't here right now. Um, just help them understand what's going on right now in this ecosystem and how they can get involved. There was a great uh, Heather Locklear commercial years and years ago for Fabergé, and I had hair when the commercial came out, <laughs> right? But she would talk about uh, if you tell two people and they tell two people and they, t right, and so on and so on. So I'm, I'm challenging you to do that. Help us spread the word about the importance of this, this time, this you know, in St. Louis and being part of this ecosystem. I challenged Bob, how can you weave in Heather Locklear and Fabergé up here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> That's how my mind works, it's scary. <laughs> yeah, I want to uh, yeah, add thank you for all of this information. Um, uh, uh, we will have our AMSL, because now we are talking about resources, our AMSL, uh, GIS labs and the VR labs will uh, be uh, ready by the beginning of the fall. And we have very interesting uh, plan to uh, for workshops and the training for teachers and for also high school students. And we will extend that to middle school students. And we, we have plan to uh, include all of, uh, all of this. So um, the teachers, when you uh, get the knowledge in, in, in the GIS or geospatial technology, you are the one who is going to deliver this to our children in schools. So we, our future is based on you and your, and your efforts. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, also I want to add this because someone at GUN asked me a question about, uh, you know, how, how we can get, you know, this uh, technology and the science delivered to school students. I told them, uh, children now, they are different from, from us. They, they are the technology generation. So we need to have out-of-the-box solution to them. So for example, when we, uh, when we learned geography, it was from text box and you know, memorizing the maps and the locations. And when you ask a student now to do that, it will be very hard for them. They spent most of the day uh, on iPads, I have three children, you know, I, they talk to me beh from behind the, the <laughs> iPads and <laughs> the phones. So what if we deliver this science to them in this format? Make the geography in story maps. Make the GIS yeah. as apps and the games. So they will like to do it. They will love to learn this technology. And this will be included in our uh, discussion with the Talent Initiative Working Group mm -hmm. that we have monthly meeting and we uh, are uh, going to continue in that and our teachers will be included in all of these efforts. The last, I, I know we took too long, <laughs> too long time. I just wanted to add something yeah, to that sure. really quickly, sorry. Um, uh, t to add to the point is that once young people uh, get an understanding of the geospatial technology and they start to think about things geographically, their whole world opens up. Yeah. Um, it's transformative. And they go from not even knowing this word, geospatial, to now walking into um, a room and being able to talk to you about things that are going on in the world and how it impacts the nation and the community. Yeah. 
So this really is, um, it, it, it really is transformative for young people. So they get excited once yeah, they learn it. Yeah, just had, uh, you know, youngsters brief myself, the deputy director yeah. of NGA, and they're, they're amazing, right? They, they just wow you with uh, their enthusiasm and the way that they can, they can uh, take complex situations and, and try, start to tell that, understand it and tell the story in very easy to understand ways. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah, our, our future is bright. Yeah, it yes. is bright, and they're excited. They get excited. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, we are now at, you know, the last point in, in this discussion because we are all must work as a, one unit, yeah. as a, a community, and we want to talk about the strategies that are uh, being implemented to strengthen the talent pipeline and ensure the inclusion of underrepresented groups in efforts to develop the geospatial workforce in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with Zakita in this question mm -hmm. because of her great job in, for our Thank ecosystem. Thank you, I appreciate that. So um, one of the biggest strategies is really engagement so, or, or awareness, I'll start with that the awareness piece. Uh, we always say that you can't pursue what you're not aware of, mm -hmm. right? So making sure that young people are aware of what the opportunities are um, uh, in terms of the, uh, a pathway, I should say, or several pathways. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the first piece, the awareness. And then once they're aware, now what do we do with this awareness? Well, here's some skills that you can have to build a resume or to transfer into uh, higher education or to go into the workforce. So that's a big piece of it and meeting people where they are in terms of underrepresented communities. Uh, so we serve both uh, the urban center and rural communities because we know that there's issues in both. Um, and so making sure that young people know that we know what your situation is uh, or we understand it, I should say, uh, and that we are willing to meet you where you are. Uh, that's a big piece of being able to service the underrepresented groups uh, or under-resourced for sure. Yeah, uh, as a CEO of Gateway Global, mm -hmm. yeah, what's the Gateway Global? <laughs> what so, <do> you <laughs> Gateway Global is a tech-based workforce development organization. Uh, and so, uh, and, and I always have to tell people, it's not in lieu of higher education like workforce development organizations usually are. We tell our students do this and pursue higher ed. It's not an either or because we understand with role, more uh, education, there's more role responsibility and higher pay. And quite often when they come to us, they may not know what they want to do, but by the time they leave, they know they want to do something big and impactful. So. Yeah. Um, also, you know, AMSEL is different from other universities here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. We have diverse students from uh, all groups, from underrepresented groups. So, Chancellor, I'm sure you will add to this point. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, taking a, you know, going on, or, or piggybacking on what um, you know, Zakita had to say, it is about awareness, and awareness earlier is better. And so making sure that we, of course, even in higher education, have helped support and build out pipelines as people come up, you know, students come up through that is gonna be important. We have a fantastic, for example, a fantastic bridge program Good. that yeah. has long been um, important, particularly in under-resourced um, areas of our, of our um, of our region to really help prepare students to, to be a contributor, to understand and become aware of what the options that they have in the world and, and make them prepared and help them be um, easily accessible to those opportunities. So that's important for us to help build that pipeline, but also to collaborate and coalesce with others that are working in that space so that things are seamless, so that we are, um, make you know having people aware of that but even in higher education now you you take a look at i guess i would say the previous model of higher ed which was very much you come here for four years and we'll prepare in whatever it is that you want and go out you know that model frankly you know to be educationally relevant we are have evolved to um, what the future um, needs and that is making sure that students can 
come in and get um, you know, the training and skills that they need and go back into the job force, people are popping in and out. And we have to make sure that every time they do that, the skills that they've had previously are absolutely applied, you know, applicable to the next set of skills. So it's not necessarily a four-year education, frankly, is not um, the future. It's not what people necessarily need. And as many of you who are teachers know, you know, you're here because you want, you know, the next level, the next scale up. That's what we're doing all across the space. And geospatial has to be um, a big component of that. I was hoping you would talk about the bridge program because mm -hmm. it really is a great example that others should replicate. And yeah. what I love about the program is it's, it's something I call intrusive talent management. It's right. It's, uh, it's rolling up your sleeves and engaging and creating that opportunity, awareness and opportunity, and then also following through and making resources available. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, if you're not familiar with the program, I don't have long, I could talk about it for hours, but it's just <laughs> one of those things when I saw it, I'm like, this is just, it's transforming lives. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, and not just individual lives, but families' lives. And I'll, I'll, uh, I know we're about to get the hook here. <laughs> two, two things I'd say about what's really special about what's going on out here is, is the teaming, right, and the, uh, the collaborative uh, effort. And I was talking to somebody here earlier today. It's, it's people who normally you might look at, at what they do and they might think of somebody else's success as comp competition, right? There's no, there's no competitive focus out here. It really is one big team and team very broadly defined. So if you don't think you're on the team, you are, right? <laughs> uh, you just didn't know it yet. But uh, so anybody who's saying, hey, I want to contribute, we're like, yes. We don't even know what you're going to do, but you're on the team. <laughs> so I think that's really special out here. And then the inclusivity about this, you know, I've, I've always been very deliberate about this with my teams. And I, I deliberately look around the room and I'm like, okay, who's here? And then I spend time, I'm like, who's not here? and could be and should be. So I think as we continue to grow this, we just need to, to make that part of our filter, right? And to, to con continually think about how do we continue to strengthen our efforts? Um, and it really is, I highlight it once again as an example for other regions in this country to, to emulate, right? Maybe not centered around geospatial, but this is the way that we can really be our potential, I think, as a nation this collaboration um, between like-minded individuals that have different resources, different abilities, and just bringing those all together, focused on what is most important for our future, which is our next generation. That's right. Yeah, thank you so much. I want to thank you again for, uh, your, for coming today, and thank you uh, for the interesting discussion today. Nicole want us to run out of here. <laughs> <Yes>. for, <laughs> 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 thank you.